Hey there. PDFs are a common way to send documents, but if you've ever needed to s edit one by removing pages, adding pages, or merging a couple together, they can be pretty frustrating without having the full version of Adobe Acrobat. Fortunately, Python and the library PyPDF2 allow us to do most of these things for free with just a few lines of code. In this video, we'll do a bit of a hello world example for merging PDFs, refactor it, and then add a command line interface. We're not getting too fancy yet, but look for another video soon that adds a GUI and then turns the script into an executable file that you can run on any machine. So first, let's make sure we have PyPDF2 installed. In your terminal of choice, just go ahead and type in pip install, oops, PyPDF2, noting the caps. And you can see I've already got it uh, because it comes with the Anaconda distribution of Python, which if you're on Mac, or PC is a great way to uh, work with Python. So now that we've got that, we'll go into our editor and import PyPDF2. I went ahead and created two PDF documents over here. Uh, they're real simple. Document one has two pages, so one of two and two of two. And document two has three pages, one of three, two of three, and three of three. So now that we have these two documents, and I put them in the same directory as the script, uh, just to keep things simple for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and open up both of those. And PyPDF2 works with the binary versions of these, so we'll read them in a binary format. that RB. Okay, so now that we've opened them up in Python, we'll go ahead and create some PyPDF uh, PDF file reader objects with these. Using the PDF file reader object that we will give that F1 uh, document there. We'll do that again. For two. And you can see right now that we are repeating ourselves a ton. So don't worry, we will fix that soon. <laughs> okay, so now we've opened up the files, we've created our objects based on there, and let's figure out how many pages we have in each one. So we can do this by calling our object and the get num pages function off of that. And just like that. While we're here, let's create our output file, which we can just call something like uh, new doc PDF, and just like we read in binary, we want to write in binary as well. And we can create our document writer object as well with PDF file writer. We don't need any arguments here. Okay, so now we have our writer. We could write a document, but we don't have anything in there. So we're going to add each page to, of our documents to this writer object. And there's a way to go ahead and um, add the entire document at once, but this will work out better for us uh, when we add some features. So we can add pages to this writer, and to get these page objects, we go ahead and we use get page. So we can go in and iterate through like that. and do the same thing here. So this will add all of our document one pages first, and then we'll go in and add our document two pages. Just like that. So now that we've added everything to our writer, we can 
get our writer, call write, and write to that output file like that. And we should uh, clean up everything here. So all the files that we opened, let's go and close those. Oops. And OK, assuming I didn't do anything wrong, we should be able to call this down here like that. Ooh, what did I do? I forgot in, of course. Let's try that again. And we can see we had a new document uh, pop up here. So if I go and open this up, Okay, one of two pages, two of two pages, ah, one of three pages, two of three, and three of three. So congratulations, you just merged a PDF, two PDF documents, sorry, uh, for free. So uh, it's a great start. Uh, code looks pretty messy. So let's go and clean this up. Okay. So uh, let's go and clean this code up just a little bit uh, to make it easier to add our command line interface uh, later on. So the first thing, if we're looking here, is we need to open up two of these files and then make these PDF reader objects off of them. So we could just call or make a uh, something off of the file name. And in there. basically do the exact same thing that we did. Just like that. And now we can get rid of these. And each of these just become load PDF. Just like that. And these don't exist anymore, so we can close those. The next thing is these, these two loops here. We don't want to have those. So we can just do something like this. And we'll have a PDF object and a writer object. OK, let's copy the same thing we did. And this time I'll put in the first time. Okay, so this should now take care of these we don't need. Well, actually, let's leave those for now because we will use them in a bit. Let's get rid of these, and we will just add to writer, PDF1, and writer. And we can just cop basically copy and paste this down here. So you can see this is still very oriented towards having just two PDFs. Um, these would be very easy to turn into lists of these objects, um, which would allow us to have almost an infinite number of uh, PDFs. So we can uh, test this out real quick. Um, I deleted the new document over here, so let's just try to run this. Let's see if we get any errors. And of course course we do because I forgot to call this. Got to add those parentheses there. All right, let's try that again. No, let's uh, get rid of this mess. And there we go. Good test of a refactor is to make sure it still does the same thing that it did before. And it does. OK, so this is all set now. Um, Let's add a little bit to let us interact with this in the command line. OK, so right now we can merge two full documents together. Uh, this isn't really useful if we don't always want to open up this script uh, to change you know, which documents we're going to be working with. So let's add a little bit of communication so that we can work with this in the command line.
So I guess we can start off with like something like welcome to the PDF merger. Something like that. Um, and then the effort of keeping things readable, we'll have two file names um, for each of the files that we're working with. And I'll just say that, let's call this, um, please type the Okay, and let's just copy and paste that. I said this will be second now. Okay, and now that we have these file names that the user will type in, we can just put them here. And you might be seeing a way that we could refactor this already. Um, but we're not going to, <laughs> just to keep things as readable as possible. So the user will be prompted with this, they'll type in their file names, and then we'll load the reader objects based on what they type in. So that should get us all set there. Now we keep these so that we can go down and find out we're going to have a start page and an end page. So let's just say, okay, so, um, actually take the first file name here we'll use this guy to type in file name one and PDF one pages like that and we'll say start one is going to equal try to make this a little more grammatically correct something like that so this should come out and be an integer which will actually force that by putting this all into there end one will be about the same so the user will know how many pages they have and which ones to use now we can go ahead and let's copy this whole thing for number two. Just like that. We'll call these start two and end two. Then our output file, we will say output file name. something like that and then we can replace this here with that output file name and that'll allow us to choose what that file will save as then we'll add to writer and we'll write that and close everything out the only issue here is we don't use our start and our end variables anywhere so let's go up to our add to writer and let's just say we have a start and an end. So that allows us to put those values in um, and we'll just change our range here. Now our list here is zero indexed but obviously the user is not going to say start on page zero. They'll probably say start on page one. So we'll want to, well let's say they wanted to start on page one. We want to have our start minus one to account for that and then our page end we can leave as it is because it's not inclusive when we use the range um, function here. So if there were seven pages and you said end on seven, it would end on list index six. Uh, so that should work there. But we can go down here and let's just say start one, end one. Start two and end two. So just like before, duplicating a ton. Um, but let's just see if this works. Okay. Uh, the first file, document1.pdf and document2.pdf. Okay, document1 has two pages. That's good. 
uh, we'll start on page one and we'll end on page two. Okay, document two has three pages. This time let's start on two and end on three. And we'll save the new file as uh, merge incomplete. Why not? Okay, fingers crossed. Didn't see any errors. Okay, got a new file over here, merge incomplete. Let's open it up and see what we have. Okay, page one of two. Page two of two, so we got both of those. Now we start on page two of three and three of three. So we could go ahead and uh, let's go back to our Atom editor here. Let's rerun that. Uh, document one dot PDF, document two dot PDF. And uh, let's just get the first pages of each one. So let's see if we can start on one and end on one. And on this one, let's start on this and end on this. And we'll just call this first pages dot PDF. See if this works. Okay, went through with no errors. We open it up, page one of two, and page one of three. So we were able to take the first pages of each one. So if you notice, I mean, we've got a pretty solid way to manipulate with uh, some of our pages. We can't exactly delete pages within. Uh, so if we wanted to take like the first two pages, get rid of the third one, and then take all the pages after that, we can't do that just yet. Um, but really with just a few minutes and a few lines of code, we've been able to give us the ability to uh, merge two full files and merge two incomplete files. So, and all for free. So I th think that's pretty cool. Um, working with the command line kind of sucks. Uh, so look forward to putting this into a GUI and then making executive files that we could make for Mac and PC computers that uh, we don't need to install Python. You can just click on something and see your regular file open windows and go from there. So thanks for watching and uh, yeah, look forward to the next one.